All right, welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mac Podcast here on 1010XL's podcast platform, 1010XL.com. Check out all the great podcasts that are up on the website and on the app. Of course, we are on Facebook. Hello, Facebook, 1010XL's Facebook page, and streaming on the relevant app as well, the group messaging chat app with live interactive podcasts throughout. I'll tell you what, just go download the free app, become a member. It's your name and email. That's all they ask for. You get right onto the app. You explore all of our our collections. Go to the Pro Sports Fanatics uh, collection, the portal, and just see all the teams represented, all the interaction, all like-minded fans. It's so cool. I do shows on the Jaguars Fanatics Vibe channel, on the NFL Fanatics Vibe channel, of course, this Vibe channel as well. Check it out. Free download on the Apple Store and uh, on Google Play as well. Had a great week. Hope you did too. Uh, you know, hey, you know what's great about this off season? The, the, there's the 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 periods, the doldrum period of it's all speculation, right? We're all wondering, worrying, waiting about some silly little thing that's going to add up to nothing. A little Tom Petty for you out there. Um, you know what I mean? It's kind of like what's going on. But I'll tell you what's going on in my world. Uh, the horse's mouth in full effect. We film on Thursdays. Yesterday, I had the privilege on top of having some business business people on the show, including Ken Brady here at Ten Ten XL. We had the Jacksonville Iceman on, and if you don't know me that well, you should know that I, I love hockey. I mean, I, I don't watch it enough. I don't go to the games enough, but I love the mentality of hockey players. I hung out with them in college at Boston College with a great, great program for hockey. 1992, seven Boston College hockey players were on the Olympic team. I mean, they were absolutely incredible. Uh, ever since I was here in the beginning of 1995, I used to pal around with the Jacksonville Bullets who were basically like slap shot. They were the best. They were animals, total, total animals on and off the ice. I, I hadn't made the Jags yet. I literally had to tell them, guys, I love you, but I can't hang out with you anymore. You, you, you're too nuts. You, you're going out too much. You're drinking too much. You're getting in fights too much. And I just, I got to go make a football team. They were fantastic though. But the Lizard Kings, uh, the Barracudas, I mean, Jacksonville, for a team that doesn't have an NHL team, they're, they're pretty big followers of hockey. And I tell you, the Jacksonville Icemen are totally kicking butt. 30, 14, and three, three ties. Uh, they're in first. They're going to the playoffs. It's rocking. They're playing this weekend. I think they're playing Norfolk this weekend at home, if you can go. It's a phenomenal time, by the way, without a doubt. Tonight and tomorrow. Tomorrow night and tomorrow. For their games. Oh, they're playing Florida. I'm not sure. Playing, no, I think they're playing Florida. I think it's a big, they are, big rival. They're bringing back out the, uh, the Lizard Kings uniforms. That's right. That's They're going right. to be the Lizard Kings tonight and tomorrow. Well, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting and talking to Nick Luco, uh, their head coach, only 30 years old. You know, we kind of talked about, like, you're like Sean McVay. You know what I mean? Like, you're this young <laughs> coach coaching young guys. And he's like, yeah, you he's know. He's the young creative mind. Yeah, just <laughs> the way they interact. He's like, you know, look, I got to do a little bit of, you know, more positive than, you know, getting on him. He's like, but it's a good mix. I got a great bunch of guys. Two of their players, I butchered this kid's name yesterday, but I'm going to say it today, and I don't know how I butchered it so bad, but Austin Mac McEnany, thank you, Austin McEnany from Ontario, uh, he was at the bar, and so was Kyle McKenzie, who's a defenseman for the team. He's the older guy. He's like 29. He got from Philly. I just love the story. You know, they did. They're going after it, man. They're going after the dream of just playing great hockey. And if you haven't been to an Iceman game, I'm not a paid spokesperson. I'm really not. But try to go because they're bring so the kids. fun, man. Bring the kids. I mean, bring the whole family. It's we we've gone a few times over the years with like two or three families, adults, kids. Man, take up a couple rows, have the time of our life. I mean, it, it is one so much the, fun. One of the more fun things you can do this time of year in Jacksonville. Oh, without a doubt, it's without so doubt. awesome. So we're pulling. Pulling for the Iceman, man. Let's get that championship. And I think I'm going to be speaking to the team, too, so get them fired up. Let's go. But uh, it was funny, Kyle. Let's go. You buried the lead. Oh, yeah. That was the coolest part. What's that? You buried the lead. Oh, that yeah. was the coolest part. <laughs> yeah, You're firing absolutely. up. The... So if they lose, I know who to blame. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Kyle McKenzie, who played at Providence College, big rival of Boston College in hockey. So it was cool hanging out. Uh, they were They were great guys. And Arlie Johnson was there who we know here from 1010XL, and Alex Reed, their broadcast team. They were fantastic. Just sitting at the bar, drinking, a, sipping on a few beers, talking about hockey, talking about business. It's just, it's just all 
all good. Looking around the National Football League, how about this coming out about Miami and Brian Flores? Brian Flores uh, reportedly, he said this, on, I think on on, uh, on uh, HBO Sports with Brian Gummel. Um, Brian Flores declined to sign a separation agreement that team owner Stephen Ross presented to him. Uh, millions of dollars were at stake. He declined it, and he said, if I, if I would have signed it, that would have really silenced me. There's something going on in Miami. You better start investigating. I know we're investigating Washington. You better start investigating the Miami Dolphins. What kind of bull crap is that, man? What is that? Good for you, Brian. Good for you. And I'm glad you got a job with Pittsburgh. And I'm glad you're still able to coach. And I'm glad you're still in the league. Took a lot of guts to do what you're doing. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, uh, th- that that the, the owner's racist. I think it's more than, than, than these throwing games and trying to get them to, you know, do this and do that and not win and I'll pay X. If all that stuff's true, and if all this is true, which I believe in Brian Flores, everything that he put on the line, why would he lie? You know what I mean? Like, he put everything on the line. His whole career on the line. You went against the big machine. The NFL is a massive machine. You don't go against them unless you want to get burned or buried or both. But he didn't. And I'm glad he's with Pittsburgh. I'm glad Mike Tomlin gave him a job, reached out and all the brands, say, hey, man, you come join us. Let's go win a championship. But if that is truly going on in Miami, Stephen Ross, I don't know you, but the other owners got to vote you out, sell the team, you're out. You can't have that. You can't have the racism either. If that can be proven, I'm all for it, no doubt. But if this is going on in Miami, awful. Just flat out awful. Brian Flores, I'm an even bigger fan of yours, man. You keep up the great work, no doubt about it. Uh, Looking up at Green Bay, you know, it's funny. I was like, you know, Devontae. Devontae Adams isn't going anywhere. Just stop. He's not going. Unless you're throwing him the moon, and you're not going to do that after you're Jacksonville. And just the first pick alone in the draft would not do it. Going to be interesting with Aaron Rodgers. Word is he wants to be the highest paid QB in the league now, which I think the highest is Mahomes at $45 million a year. What are you going to pay him? Would you pay him $50 million a year for three years? I yes. would. <laughs> I would too. Yep. All day long. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're close. They're so close to getting to that champion, to win it, getting the Super Bowl and win it. They're pretty close. And I mean, listen, to take Aaron Rodgers away from that team, what are they? Nothing. It, nothing. No offense to Jordan Love, but you're not Aaron Rodgers. Maybe Definitely. we'll down the road, right. but you're nowhere near Aaron. Aaron Rodgers, forget about what you think about him. I know everyone's got an opinion because he does this, says this, whatever. As a football player, he's one of the best quarterbacks to ever play in the National Football League, he makes without fo- a doubt. He makes it look easy, man. He makes it look so easy. It's and ridiculous he's a what he can do. He's a good leader. He looks like he's a good teammate. I'm not a huge – he's got a little of that California air, you know, we're better than everybody else kind of kind of thing. But other than that, I got no problems with Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be tough. Um, and, and I'm kind of reading between the lines here, so please forgive me. Um, if it's true that at last year, you know, when they were negotiating, and Aaron believes that that they can't stop him from being traded, right, after playing last year, if he truly believes that, which I don't know if he does, well, GM Brian Gooden, Gutekunst, whatever, however he pronounces his name, him and Rogers have a little thing. He came out, I think, yesterday, the day before, and said, I never told him I was going to trade him. I was never, I never told him that was part of the deal. So I hope that's not the case. Because if that's not the case, it, it could it could blow up. Uh, I don't think it will, though. I think they will figure it out. But here's the problem. They just redid Kenny Clark, the great defense, he's very good defense tackle, uh, freeing up like $10 million in cap. There's still $38 million over the cap. I mean, they got a lot of cutting to do. Zadarius Smith may be expendable. Number 91, the outside backer, pass rusher. Maybe. He's, he was hurt last year, um, but maybe. It's going to be interesting. I mean, you got the combine, what, next week? I love the combine. And by the way, I want to see my number you, my number one thing. I want to see the receivers run, but number one, I want to see Evan Neal move. He may not run the 40. I don't care. I just want to see him in position drills if he does them, and I hope he does them because um, I just want to see that guy. He's a monster of a man. Got really long arms. He's. Six seven whatever three fifty three forty. If he can move good enough, done. You take him. They say he's nasty too, which we need more nastiness on the on the offensive line. Going to be interesting because now March eighth, that's the deadline for franchise tag. I know the talk of the town. What do you do with Cam Robinson? 
What do you do with Brandon Linder? How are you going to upgrade that? What do you do with Norwell? Norwell's a free agent. I mean, you can't just clean the whole house, I don't think. You There's can't just, so many different things you, they could do can't. with that you gotta, one. You got to figure out, you know, am I, am I going to... Am I going to take my chances with Neil and Little and Taylor, who's going to be somewhere, maybe a swing guy, as my tackles, keep Linder, re-sign Shatley to be a solid backup? Can I go get a guard? Can I draft a guard? Let Norwell walk? Although, I don't I don't know. I If, if Doug Peterson and Press Taylor and company are going to run, um, you know, like a zone-type blocking RPO, you know, like Caroline, like Philly used to, you know, that type of, and they still do with her. You know what I mean? Like reading, pulling it out, and throwing that type of thing. You got to be a really athletic guard. You got to be a really athletic center offensive line overall. But you're not like two gap on a guy, like, boom, I got to take him. You're more like, I'm moving this way and I'm going to move my body and just get in your way, or I'll cut you, right? I'm athletic enough to get on the ground and get you on the ground. So Norwell is kind of that player. And that's what made him one of the top free agents when we signed him out of Carolina, because that's the kind of player. He wasn't a grabby movie out of the way, you know, boom, turn you, give my back, you know, my back and crease behind me. He's, I don't think he's that kind of player. But if Doug Peterson wants that kind of player, you know, the guy, the, the zone athletic get in the way, he may be your guy. Gonna be gonna be interesting. I'm looking Does he take a pay him. cut due to the whirly bird? <laughs> Just get rid of the whirly bird. Nobody, nobody believes it. <laughs> Uh, the, by by the way, um, most of the time when your guy in front of you pulls, you penetrate. You don't wait. You don't go sideways. Your guy in front of you goes, what are you doing? I'm getting upfield as quickly as possible. That's why they always have someone come down on you, right, or trap block or whatever. But you, you, your guy pulls in front of you, and you're a defensive lineman, you're going, you're going forward, man. You ain't trying to, oh, I'm going to go around and try to meet him. You're not doing that. You're going, and somebody better be able to block you. And if you're fast enough, that tackle never gets you. They'll have to do it this way just because of perpendicularness, if that's even a word. You know what I mean? War am you this way. So, anyway, going to be interesting. I'm, all, I'm almost of the feeling of keeping Cam and keeping DJ Chark. And I would tag Cam, and I would give DJ a four-year deal. I'm still adding more, but I, I, may, that, I may keep those guys. I mean, and Linder, it doesn't count against your cap, so I keep him. Now, granted, he gets hurt. I really like Ryan Jensen. For I, if if I could have one guy in the offensive line, um, out of last year's starters and free agent class right now, Ryan Jensen would be number one. He is he is a a, a beast of a center. Um, he's athletic. He's he's a bigger um and a little bit meaner. Uh, Jason Kelsey with the same amount of athleticism. He's bigger than Kelsey. Kelsey's like 6'3", 300. He's like 6'4", 320. Um, they're just as athletic. Jensen's just, he just got the right attitude. You know what I mean? We had it too. Wydell had it. Cheever had it. Wade, New Year. They all had that just nasty. You had to be a little nasty when you play center. And Jensen brings that. So I, he, to me, you could somehow figure out him. Um, you know, that you're going to have to figure out the guard. So if you bring in Jensen and you keep Linder, I put I put Linder at guard. And if he gets hurt, well, he gets hurt anyway. I mean, last two years, he's played 18 games, nine each, out of 17 and out, or out of 16 and out of 17. That's, that's not good. We need him in there more. Shatley's fine. Shatley's solid play. He can, I don't know if he's my full-time starter, but if I need him to play a few games, I'm fine with him. So who would you have the other guard spot? If you if you brought in Jensen, moved Linder to one guard spot. Yep. Who's 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 playing your other guard? Well, I'm gonna I, I may draft a guard, right? I may depending depending on what I do in free agency is going to be big, right? Do I keep Cam? Yeah. Do I let Cam walk? Right. I'm gonna draft Neil without it, especially if he can move. Like I said, I, I mean, there's no one else. You're not drafting the DNs. You're not. You're not. You're not big on them. Not for number one. Yeah. Not for this team. You know. Now, granted. I may change my mind. Say Hutchinson goes to the combine or pro day or whatever, and he runs a ridiculous time. Like his speed's off the charts, which I don't think it's going to be. That would be that would get me to at least think about it. Now Thibodeau has got all that, and he's got production. He's just a little bit younger. You know, he came he came out after his junior year. But I still think that that's too risky. That's a maybe. I think Neil mitigates the risk. 
SEC, going against the top talent all the time, dominating for the most part. You know what I mean? I like the fact that he's played left, <clears throat> left and right tackle. Yeah, and listen, I'm okay. I like the versatility. Again, you know, I said this on another podcast. Like, if Neil plays guard for a year, like you keep Cam, let's just say, and Neil's your guard, great. What's wrong with that? Or what if I right? draft? What if I draft Evan Neal and at least for now, I make him my right tackle. I let Cam walk, and Walker Little's if my left tackle. You, well, that that's the caveat, uh, Graham. A great, great, you know, bringing that up because they would really have. That's Doug and the new staff, brand new staff, never coach these guys, only going based on film and talking to them. You got to believe that Neil and Little are better. Either one are better than Cam. I don't know if that's the case right now. We said this before. You look at Cam. Teron uh, uh, Armstead for the Saints, okay, he's better than Cam. Other than that, there's not like there's a ton of left tackles waiting to be picked up in free agency that you're going to— Once, once Teron gonna, Armstead finds a home, Cam is the best left tackle on the market. Arguably, arguably. You know, look, I, I've said this before. Out of 100%, 100 being the best, he's at about an 85. Is that fair? I think it's pretty fair. He's a good left tackle. He's a— He's almost a very good left tackle. He's right. like good, very good. Right. You know, and then there's great. He's not great. He's not very good yet, but he's kind of on that line. Listen, there's games where he really performs well. So he's a he's a consistent B plus. Yeah, or B. B yeah. to B plus. Right. Right? Which is better than a better lot of- Better than you get out there for a lot more. Better than a lot of good right. football teams can right. say. Can you upgrade him? Maybe. With Armstead or Neil. Neil, look, if they believe Neil- Evan Neal can be the guy. Then, yeah, he's he's out. You don't need him anymore. And he'll go somewhere. Somebody that needs a left tackle will pick up Cam. They'll pay him money, and he'll have a great rest of his career. I guarantee you that. Unless he gets hurt, knock on wood. I don't want anybody getting hurt. But that that's – he's going to – trust me this. And I'm okay if you let him walk if you believe the other two are going to take over. Right? I'm okay. But I will say this very very confidently. If Cam goes to another team, He'll have a great rest of his career, and he might go to a, a championship-style team. Because if that's a piece you're missing, what about, Cincinnati. I was, I was about, I was just about to say, what about the Bengals? Cincinnati, you let Cam go. Absolutely, I'm taking him in a heartbeat. Absolutely, He's better than Jonah Williams. Not even easy. He's better than Jonah Williams, so you take him in a heartbeat. You can move Jonah Williams to right. <laughs> like you, you would have a lot around. of stuff you could do then if you're Cincinnati. Right. I mean, and then Jonah's absolutely. defense came off a knee. You know, it's only a year removed, so. You know, I get it, but it's going to be exciting. And then, you know, Scherf, I'd rather have Jensen move Linder than keep Linder and have Scherf. Scherf gets hurt, too. You got to be – I mean, look, it's hard to stay healthy as an offensive lineman. I mean, you're smash each other. However, and Dempsey off, off the Jaguar sh- Today Show, he, he, he went through the games played by Ryan Jensen, 16, four years in a row, 17 this last year. Wow. So he don't miss. Yeah. We need that. So, no doubt. based on your like what you've been saying about getting a guard or getting Jensen and moving people and whatever, where are you out on uh, Ben Barge? I like Ben. I want to see Ben compete for one of the guard positions. If, so he if, may be my left guard when it's all said and done. If Norwell yeah. is not here, he if may. Ben is your if he's your starter opening day, how do you feel about that? I feel fine. I feel fine. He's got to get more consistent. He start like. Th- it's funny, you, you hear the pun, it's like, at first, they're like, oh, this guy's unbelievable, he's pancaking everybody, he's doing all this stuff, and then as time went on, oh, he's struggling a little bit, I get it. So, I'm not totally sold yet, he's got to get better, but I tell you what, year one to year two for him was very good, year two to year three should be even better, just from if- playing and having having the experience of getting a little bit older, a little bit more mature, physically, mentally, emotionally. I remember, listen, 22, 23 compared to 26 27, 28, and even 29, no comparison. I was Superman compared to my 23-year-old self. Physically, mentally, emotionally, ready to play the game, being able to play the game. Bigger, stronger, faster, quicker, better, you know, cerebrally, you know, knew, knowing how to read better, knowing how to key better, like night and day. So I, I don't, that, you got to factor that in too. When you think of like Cam and you think about Barch, like, let them walk. They're going to go into their prime somewhere else. You, I, I like keeping guys in their prime on my team. That's why a lot of teams go after second contract guys. Because why? They're 24, they're 25, they're maybe 26, and I'm going to get them 
through 30. And that's like, are you kidding me? You, give me a steer. That's the best meat on a steer most of the time. You know, now, granted, some guys buck that theory and they start right off the bat. They're incredible for 12 years or 15 years or whatever. Um, and they're in their prime right off the bat. But a lot of guys, that's why they go after that second contract guy because he's coming into his prime. And I think most as a man, too. Most linemen, too, takes that development period, especially like with Barch. Like he, he didn't play. He didn't play offensive line until college. It depends. I mean, the guy from the Colts didn't need no. Oh well, yeah, true. You know, T- it depends. Take away, on the, it depends. Take away like maybe like your top ten, top fifteen <laughs> type Scherf guys. Was a beast right off the bat. Right. Yeah. Usually, if you're drafting a lineman, second round, third round, fourth round, mm. you're going to probably need a year or two to really see what kind of player they can be. Totally. T- typically, what I what I, I mean, you would know better than me because you've seen these guys. But yep. I, from from what I've seen, that's. Yeah. Kind of what I've noticed with linemen. Hey, here's especially. a question for our credit Dempsey as well. What if for thirty-two million to cap, you got about sixty to spend, about yeah. half, you re-sign Chark and you get a Rob. That's your one-two punch. You keep Jones, of course. Got Agnew. See what happens with Chenault. Then you draft a guy too, probably. And draft a guy. I, I love that. Yeah, I would go for that. I'm I am absolutely on board. I am yep. very much team re-sign DJ Chark. You got to um, make sure you have a number two though. Agreed. I'm not agreed. Sold that agreed. he's my number one, like a Metcalf. Right. Like I can count it. Not yet. He could be. He's got the potential for that. There's no doubt about it. If he stays healthy, he's got to learn to run routes a little bit better. You know, he's got to break him off quicker, more cleaner, and that type of thing. But he is such a deep threat that he's going to scare the crap out of D coordinators and 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 corners that are up against him if he can stay healthy. Um. So I, but I would, I would sign him too. I, I. That's what. I, I might even keep them both if I could, you know, Cam. And again, it's going to come down to how I feel about the young tackle. I would rather, if I had to pick who I'm keeping, I'd rather pick Chark because just because I think, I think Cam is probably better. Mm, I don't know. They're they're about the same at their positions, in my opinion, about how productive well, they are. But yeah. I would, whoever you get rid of, though, you got to replace. Right, so which is exactly who am I going to replace DJ with, or who am I placing right with? now? I agree with you, and I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm not you're trying good. to speak no, you're for good. you. But if Cam does go, that means you believe in the young guys, period. Right. You Little, your guy, or Neil, you bring, we'll figure it out, but they're my, I'm going with them. Right. I got a young QB. I'm going with young tackles. Fine. Right? You got But you got to believe right. that, they're, that they're as good or better, maybe not now, but, you know, two years, three, whatever, a year, two years, whatever. You're better than what Cam Robinson would have been if right. he was here. Or DJ Chark in yeah. that, that position. I am I am more of the desire to keep Chark than Cam just because and that's not saying I want to get rid of Cam. That's no, saying I if, I, if I, I had know. to pick. Yeah, if you had to pick. Um because I feel like there are more resources yep. that are already on the team and to go get guys okay. to replace Cam than DJ Chark. Pick two out of three. Linder, Cam, Chark. Pick two to keep. Yep. <sighs> Uh, and you don't have to tag Linder, right? So you can save the tag, yeah. or, or you could mm-hmm. tag Chark. That's just that's so tough because of Linder's injury history. I know. If he wasn't hurt, it'd be a no brainer. No brainer. He's. Such I'd a still sucker. probably say Linder Chark. Yeah. Unless now, you believe in Little, you got. I mean, right. it's only two. I mean, it's funny fans. I I love you, man. But and you, Evan Neal is right there. Games, and... I don't know. You know who knows? He could be. He got better. But don't look the Colts game. Yes, we played very well. They didn't play well. They did. I mean, they just they, they played mean, bad. Uh, the Colts, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Colts played, played great. Awful. I'm not taking away. It was a great win. We all look great. Everybody looked great. Everybody's great. La 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 la. We're all happy. But at the end of the day, Indy was the better team. They and just it was didn't play up to their capability. There, it was the incentive game. Yeah. Nobody balls out more than the Jaguars on incentive game. Uh, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. How about the 33rd pick sitting there? I'm not getting rid of it unless you're giving me a. Dynamite playmaker. I'm that that that's a first round pick right there. You're talking about the the Amari Cooper trade that yeah, was no. potential. Well, and just in general, I'm because that second round. Look, Tyson Campbell's going to turn out to be a good player. That's going to that's going to turn out to be a good pick. I'm I would you. I would take the Amari Cooper trade. I would do it. I don't Amari Cooper for the second and the fifth. I would do it. I wouldn't do it. I'm not so. Are you keeping Chark? Yeah. Are you keep going to get a Rob. At that point, I'm not getting a no. Rob. I'm probably I'm I'm having a mark. Is he a number yeah. two? Who's your number one? Chark ain't a number two. 
Chark ain't going over the middle on short routes to get something over the middle. He's going to get cut in half. Yeah. You know what I mean? I and, don't know. I it, Now, you say Metcalf, and you got to add more? Different story. I take DJ Metcalf the, in a heartbeat. The reason I would take the trade is if this was a different team, I don't think I would. If this was like the Saints or something, yeah, I don't think I would because right. I've I've seen them draft players at good value, and I've seen them wear Saints uniforms yeah. and play football for them. No, right, and be good. I don't see that here. Like the the re, I'm I'd rather have a Robin Chark than Chark and and uh, Amari, Amari Cooper. Cooper. And I like Amari Cooper. But I just I don't holding on to the for pick. this offense. What to hold on to the pick? You're and saying to keep yeah. the pick, and yeah. you know what? That pick may be a wideout. Because there's plenty, maybe an edge rusher. It may be a guard. Could be Zion Johnson from Boston College. And I'm not just saying because he's beast. This guy's an absolute beast. And he kicked everybody's ass in the senior bowl. He had a phenomenal week at the senior bowl. He's right. He may you he may not be there at 33. I just don't I would trust... trade 33 for moving up. Sorry to cut you off. You're good. I just, up into the first round. I just don't it, it's a it's a new coaching staff. I get it, and, and like that that'll present different things, but yeah. Dude, I've been burned so many times with this organization. I don't. I just don't trust them to draft good players and ha- no. like watch them. Like like Amari Cooper, I've seen play good football on an NFL field. I don't okay. think it's logically the right move to make, but I just All right, let me throw this at you. Okay, let me just throw this at you. So, you take Trent Balky's draft class last year. You mm-hmm. got Trevor. Yep. Etn gets hurt. Um, Campbell comes along. Yeah, Thais Campbell has developed well. Little yeah. coming along. Cisco, if he hits on those five, that's a phenomenal draft. It is. It is. I, I will give you that. I mean, everybody, you know, and I get it. Like the rhetoric is, oh, he sucks. You know, he can't. But but if you look at the picks, I'll, I'm not giving him credit for Trevor. I'm I, anybody would have right. picked Trevor. I think. Right. I think every team would have picked Trevor if they needed a QB and he was there, right at number one. But he still picked him, so it goes on his resume. VTN, like I just laid that out. It, that's a phenomenal draft. So. Maybe maybe he's not that bad at acquiring talent or evaluating talent and picking talent. I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he's the, you know, Bobby Bethard of the National Football League today, the old GM of the right. San Diego Chargers, who was known for just great picks all the time, right? He had a great reputation. But you look at that that class; it's not too bad, not too it, shabby. It, it's not. And I've I've thought about that too. Yep. Like I, I I don't hate the class. It's just. God, man, like until these until these picks and this cap space yep. translates to dudes that wear teal on Sundays making plays, right. I just like you I'm just what? snake I'm bit. Like I just feel I, snake. I get bit. it, and most fans are, but I'm telling you, fans right now, and I'm telling you, Graham, right now, Doug Peterson changes the whole thing. God, I hope so. He's stability. He's yeah. a veteran. He's a former player. He's won a Super Bowl. He's gone back to back. Uh, uh, playoffs after the Super Bowl. He's got the staff. I love his staff. They're all NFL people. There's no, you know, oh, hot college. Oh, I knew him in college. No, these are all NFL coaches. Some NFL players that turned into good, very good NFL coaches. Some NFL coaches that just been coaching in the NFL forever. Kept a mix of guys here, six, brought in the. I, I'm telling you, he's bringing stability to this organization. You can count on Doug. I, I've heard it, and not just. From from the media, from just people I know that I ask about, oh, you're going to love him. He's fantastic. He's everything you're going to need in Jacksonville. So I believe that that's going to happen. Let me leave you with this. And I got to credit D-Rock uh, for Michael DeRocco from ESPN putting this out there. Jags led the league last year in drop passes. We know that. 33 of them. 21 by wide receivers. 13 of the 33 on third down. Terrible. We all know it. What do I? Why do I bring that up? Because I want to go back to what Press Taylor, the new offensive coordinator, said in his press conference. And what did he say? I'm bringing back accountability. I'm bringing back. How many times did I sit here and did we all sit here sitting and go, you know, guys miss a catch? What do they do? Go back to the bench. Uh, no big deal. Yay, dog. Yeah. Bye, bye. Given, yo, you get them next time. But no, no, accountability. You know what? You want to dr- keep dropping passes? Sit your ass on the bench. I'm going to get somebody out there that wants to catch passes. How many times did Chanel drop a ball in a game? Like three, sometimes. Three drops. Out. No. I'm sorry. I'm tired of you dropping the football. That's what needs to happen with this wide receiving core, whether they add to it or not. That accountability. So I like that coming from Presto. And guess what Doug Peterson's all about? Accountability. I'm telling you. It's changing here in Jacksonville. 
I'm not ready to count them anything, call them anything, nothing. But the, 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 the culture's going to change. And that was the biggest culprit. Wasn't always the talent we drafted. Wasn't all, it was the culture that was wrong and has been wrong. I think we're going to be okay here, Jacksonville. I think we're going to be A-OK. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend, man. I got dance competitions. My girls are dancing. Uh, Nancy Dance at UNF, the big competition, baby. I got to give them the speech. Dad, not everything's football. You're wrong. Everything's football. <laughs> they just shake their head like, whatever, Dad. But I got to give it anyway because you know what? No matter what you're doing in your life, you should always try to kick its ass. And that's my message for the week. How about that? Have a great weekend. Till next time, stay safe, be cool. We'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mag Podcast on 1010XL's podcast platform, 1010XL.com. Of course, here on Facebook and streaming on the relevant app, R-E-L-E-V-N-T. Forget the A, the group messaging chat app with live interactive podcasts and throughout free download. Become a member. Check out all the great t- content. Hey, Jag fans, go to the Jaguars Fanatics Vibe channel. We've got different uh, Duval vibes. I'm I'm part of that with UCF Jaguar. We've got Men in Teal podcast, and we got the Big Cat Chat all on that channel. Just go check it out and hit the Episodes tab, and you'll see them all right there. So have a great weekend. We'll see you next time right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack.